All right. So you've come to work in Japan, or you've been thinking about it, and you've realized that perhaps after being here for a little while, teaching for, say, Borderlink or Berlitz or Interact or any one of these guys, that it's starting to look a little bit like a dead end, and you want to consider alternatives. And then you go into Reddit, and you ask for help, <laughs> and everybody there just scorns you for having chosen something that absolutely must end in tears, and you wasted your life. Nothing is ever quite so dramatic, it's not true. And in fact, there are a bunch of alternatives to the base level job of teaching at one of these large dispatch companies. And it can still follow the teaching path, but it doesn't necessarily have to. You actually have options. All of them rely heavily on you taking action, which I think is actually ultimately a good thing because then the satisfaction derived from the fact that you achieve these things via your own steam is that much more satisfying. So I wanted to talk about that today, talk about what you could do as an alternative once you've hit the quite evident glass ceiling that you will reach if you work for one of these companies. So usually, best case scenario, you're probably going to be working with something like, I don't know, 250,000 yen. Although, as I understand it now, that was 250,000 yen before, and they would prorate that amount that they paid you at, like Interact, for example, right? And so you weren't actually getting a full salary of 250,000. It was lower than that because they would have months where they wouldn't pay you at all or they would pay you half, and they don't quite sell it that way. But what they've done now is they say, we do no, we no longer prorate your pay. You're always going to be paid, but now for less. <laughs> so it's just like, it's a moving around of the pieces to maybe sound potentially more appealing, but same shit, different pile, or same shit organized into a bunch of different piles. You're gonna wanna get out of there. You're gonna want different options like I'm talking about. So I think what I'd start with is the obvious ones where if you're accumulating experience in teaching, you would be able to continue in that vein, but at a higher level. And talk about the different places that you could apply to, talk about the different things that become available to you with experience and mastery of the language. So the easiest one where you're usually working in a public school, junior high school, uh, elementary school kind of situation with one of these large dispatch companies, the immediate thing that exists beyond this is to remove the middleman, I've talked about this countless times, and you achieve this by getting a direct hire position, and like I recommend to most people, you're going to actually find the direct hire positions posted on the Board of Education's website for the region that you're looking in. So usually, if you look up the Japanese for direct hire, Board of Education, and then that region, around April they'll hire, so you probably want to look in like December or so, that's when they'll start posting uh, the opportunity for you. And you could find a direct hire position and it's better for a million reasons. Uh, first and foremost, they pay you way more money, uh, they cover your health care, they subsidize your city tax, e everything is better, everything is better, let alone you're often working at one school and so you have a more personal relationship with people there, you're given much more in the way of responsibility, it's a great gig. It's really nice, really, really good. So that's one of the options that you have where you're like, I'm sick of it being in these uh, dispatch companies. So that's one thing that you can do. But then in addition to that, with accumulated experience, you could get something like a international school or private school. And my buddy worked for one of those before he actually came out to work with me for this board of education. And he was making close to just shy of 400,000 yen per month, which is pretty good. I'm not gonna say that you're rich at that point, but I think you're an incredibly jaded person where 400,000 yen per month isn't providing you with some level of satisfaction for the amount of money that you're making. So pretty good. So you can look for these, and I would list now the different places that you could find them. So there's jalt.com, J-E-L-T.com. Jalt is, more usually tuned towards people with uh, 
people who are licensed teachers, people who are going to have like publications, maybe even have a master's and look for positions at universities, but they also have good positions there. Hello, see you. So that's one of the options that you have. You could look on Jolt. I gotta be careful not to get run over. Um, but that then leads me to my next example is, if you want to continue in this teaching vein, but you want to evolve and you're like, I don't just want experience and a better job than one of these dispatch companies. I want to shoot even higher. And this is something that I considered for a little while, which is to get a position at a university. I interviewed a guy a while back, great guy, Dan. I wish you made videos still, Dan. He made great cinematic videos, um, but he's busy. He's got a big family and stuff like that. Um, so with these universities, a lot of people are then thinking, but I'm already in Japan. Now I gotta go back to my country and that's gonna be this huge time sink and I don't know if I'll have the money saved and so on and so forth. These are real legitimate concerns and I understand people having them, but everything with a little focus, with a little drive can be overcome with a little perseverance. And so the solution to this is if you still want to work and you don't wanna go through the whole rigmarole that's right, I used rigmarole. Uh, if you don't want to go through all of that, you can basically get all this accomplished here doing distance education. Now, I went to do this, I was going to do distance education, get my master's in lingu linguistics to work for a university. I got rejected by the university, but I would say that you don't want to... Hello. Hello. Hello, see you. The kids, the kids from my school actually. I'm probably not walking the most intelligent way. Um, and they'll have to be cut if they were on screen, privacy. Do not ever show your kids in social media. <laughs> That's a bad idea. So where have I left off? It's basically that you can do this all distance education. In fact, I think over here is a cooler road and it's a little off the beaten path and so I won't risk running into a bunch of people. The smooth flow of the gimbal, I love this thing. So essentially what you get into is you get yourself applying to a bunch of distance ed master's programs. And I don't know the exact statistics on this, but there are just so many of these and they're only increasing. And because you're not attending to the university, it's usually actually cheaper. <laughs> so you can be working, still saving, working on getting your master's degree, all of this can be occurring, and you'll be in great shape afterwards. I mean, university jobs, it's hard even to say where the, the limit of those are in terms of what you could accomplish at them. Uh, the sky's the limit. I've seen some amazing, amazing salaries. More students. <laughs> um, hello. And that, I would say, I mean, that's basically the ultimate for teaching, right? Because then if you get into a university, I mean, you could, you could end up in so many different roles there. And now I'll finish off this whole teaching thing with something, the way that the landscape for teaching is evolving here. If you're quite a good teacher, you have really good Japanese. This is kind of like, that's a thing where some of these other ones, you might sneak around with a little no Japanese. You got to put in the time. You got to learn the lingity. But if you do, they're actually offering full-on Japanese teaching licenses for you to become a full-time teacher at some of these schools. That's not at the university necessarily, that's at like a high school or a junior high in the public school system, but that's how bad they want good native speakers of English. They're like, we are actually gonna make you a full-on licensed Japanese teacher, but you cannot skirt around the fact that you must, you must, you must, get your Japanese language up. So when, when everything else fails surrounding everything I'm talking about, you should always be working on that. I think if you take yourself seriously here, really be working on the language. I've failed many a time for the, uh, the N3, but I'll be doing the N3 again come December. Third time's a charm. I failed twice. Hope to pass it. So now that we've explored teaching, whoa, it's got a camera's like got a lazy eye. Uh, now that we've explored teaching, I talk about some other alternatives that you have, and specifically the one that I'm really interested in, and I'm going to be documenting the whole process of as I go through it. 
And that's in the field of IT. To become a software engineer for Android OS, for Apple OS, this whole evolved landscape of self-education that exists online is remarkably powerful and there's a lot of great places that you can do it. I'm going to go ahead and use the website called Udacity or Udacity and there's so many different programs there where they're expensive but I think particularly on Udacity it's like that because there's so much more structured where a lot of these like train yourself to do programming or software design are a little bit slap-ass, a little bit half-ass. They're not so good, but because of the additional structure, uh, they, they charge it more at a premium, something like, I would say about $400 a month. And these do not take time. Again, it's like the example where it doesn't have to now be about, I mean, I was sold the lie because it was in tra transition in history where if you get a good BA, it doesn't necessarily matter exactly what it is, Companies respect your ability to educate yourself and you will be hired and then find a place within a company. Nope, <laughs> that's not how things evolved. What they want, and I don't blame them as long as you're willing to roll with the punches, is to have people with immediately applicable skills. It's interesting these like, I don't know if you'll see at that house, super new, super, super affordable it is not the house that costs money in japan it's the land and even then your mortgage is crazy low but this isn't a video about buying houses in japan maybe that's useful maybe i can make that later but you get into this and then i really like this with udacity because if you give yourself the building blocks there's really so many routes you can go down you could potentially become involved in cloud computing uh, you could be involved with networking, but all these tech certifications that you can get from all these different websites. I can't remember off the top of my head if there's some other people aspiring to this in the comments. They're like, oh, I'm already working on that. Please link it in the comments below. People will really appreciate that. We're all trying to help each other out here, battle our way through the challenges, the modern challenges of getting a decent job. So. That's the other one. You got all these alternatives in teaching. There's the IT that you can do. And then there are other ones that wouldn't necessarily so much interest me, but they do exist. You do need a higher level of Japanese for it, but there's recruiting companies where you literally work getting other people's jobs. Not something I'm so much into, and I hear that the work environment is kind of toxic. But this is another alternative. Look at this. There's another one. Nobody yet living in it, but uh, another brand new home. I guess they're being bought. I've seen a number of them go up. They're being bought. All right, let's bring it back around. Okay. So there you have it. You got the alternatives with IT. If IT doesn't suit you, you can go down these more superior routes of teaching. If you don't like that, there's a different flavor of recruitment. There's also if you're into sales, there's a lot of companies and you're like, no, no matter what you say about the language, I can't learn the language. There are a lot of large tech companies that want you to basically consult, be the sales guy for consulting, the installing and replacement and upgrading of servers and stuff. So if you're like, I don't mind handling IT stuff, but... I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really want to actually get into the, like, the programming. I'd rather just, like, make the big sales. That exists as well, and there's some huge companies in Tokyo and all through Japan. So you could work sales. You don't necessarily need J Japanese as much. But my warning with that is maybe it would pay a little bit more in the short term. But I think that that one's more of a, it ends up being a dead end. The reason I specifically talk about the university, the reason I specifically talk about the software engineering, is because you could get into a company with that. Say, for example, Google hires you as an Android uh, software engineer. As soon as you show that you're like an intelligent person, you work on a few projects, who knows where you could go in that company? There is no ceiling above you anymore. And I would say for anyone who genuinely has this kind of like ambition bug where they would like to, sky is no limit 
go further. That's why that's so good. And as well, the university, because who knows once you get into the university, once you get your fingers in a few pies, how much more you could become involved there and you could really evolve in that position. So, these are my thoughts. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I really enjoy going for this walk because it's healthy. Please do give it a like. Please do leave a comment down below if you have any questions because I was thinking I'm going to document this uh, journey uh, that I'm on here trying to get into the uh, software development side of things. But I'm happy to answer questions about teaching and career development in Japan because so far I've done it a little and I'm not going to stop. I'm absolutely committed to breaking through until there is no longer that ceiling above me. Ideally to pursue the things I do creatively, but you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. I've got my podcast now live, submitted, reviewed, and permitted on both Spotify and iTunes. That's called The Interstice, so if you want to check that out, it's available there. Um, also, I'll be uploading it on the channel as a video, so if you want to watch the video, watch the video. Please do consider supporting me on Patreon because smaller channels like myself, we really benefit. We don't get much else other than the support of you wonderful people who tune in. Uh, if you would like to, in a way that nets you some sweet art, uh, contribute to the channel and support me, DaveTrippinShoots.com has finally gone live and I have my best select photo prints there uh, for you to be able to pick something and hang it on your wall. Lots of great options. The clock has run out. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.